my sensitivity analysis lectures will be based on a problem uh, that you see on this on the screen. Uh, this is a, a type of product called product mix, where we have to decide how many units of several products to produce in order to satisfy resource requirements and maximize the total profit. Uh, here we have two products. They are called Aquaspa and Hydrolux. Here are the data for the problem. This is column for Aquaspa. This is column for Hydrolux. And the three resources that are limited are called pumps, labor, and tubing. Pumps are just measured in the number of pumps, labor is in hours, and tubing is feet. And uh, we are given the consumption for every unit of the product, how many pumps, labor hours, and tubing is used, and then the available uh, amounts, uh, let's say in a certain period of time, let's say in a week. And then we are also given the unit profit for every product, it's 350 and 300 for product one, product two. So um, I have a separate video on um, how to model this problem and also how to solve it in Excel. Uh, you can watch it on my channel. Uh, so you can see the model that is created has two decision variables, right? One for every product and it, each of them says how many units we, the, we, we would like to produce. The objective is maximizing the total profit and the constraints are the three resource constraints corresponding here to the table. Right, so you see all of these resources calculate on the left-hand side the number of units used and on the right-hand side the number of units that are uh, available is provided so the resources say number of units used must be less than or equal the number of units available, the same pattern for the remaining two resources. And then there are simple bounds, the non-negativities, uh, meaning that every variable has to be zero or positive, we allow here fractions, this is a linear programming, right? So um, here is the optimal solution that is provided and by solvers, if you solve this problem using a linear programming solver, such as uh, uh, Excel or Gurobi, and uh, here is the optimal objective function value, in this case, the total profit, right? Uh, so a uh, very important thing to remember uh, is not to confuse the optimal solution with optimal objective function value. Solution is the plan. It's how many units we want to produce or for each product. So it's a set of values. And uh, profit or optimal objective function value in general is just one value of the objective function, the function that we specified as the one we want to maximize or minimize. Right? In this case, it's this value of this uh, function that is achieved when we plug in the optimal solution, right? So how do we solve this? Uh, how can we solve this in Excel? I have a separate video on this, but I'm just going to show you how do you obtain sensitivity analysis uh, data uh, that will be used in the subsequent uh, videos. So here is the implementation of the um, product mix model. Here we see each column for a decision variable, x1 and x2. These are spaces where I will have values. I highlight them with a color. There will be values for x1 and x2. And then here we see the data of the problem uh, formatted such that we have one line for the objective. We see profit in dollars. This is profit contribution for x1, for x2, and this is total calculated as some product. This some product takes the unit profits and takes the variable values that will be determined later and calculates the total value, right? So we could test it, for example, if I put one here, it should give me 350, right? And this, let's say, is zero, right? Um, then we have the same, some products for, um, for pumps and for labor hours and feet of tubing. These calculate the left-hand side of resource constraints, so they calculate basically how many pumps are used, how many labor hours are used, and how many feet of tubing uh, is used, are used uh, by this production plan. And here are the right-hand sides, the, the number of available units of each resource, right? So here is just, uh, this is just a, a copy from, from the slide. This is not necessary for the model. The model in Excel is this. Now, if you want to solve it, again, um, you, we need a solver, 
uh, and Excel solver is by default not enabled. So if you go here to data, you will see it is, it is not available um, under, under the uh, analysis part of the data tab. It, to enable it, you have to go to File, Options, then go to Add-ins, and then at the bottom you see Excel Add-ins, you have to click Go, and then you can find Solver Add-in, and we need to enable this and click OK. Once you do this, in a few seconds, a Solver Add-in appears here, and then you can click on it and then fill out the data for the model. Uh, now, I already have all the data filled out, so you can see the objective cell is this. Right? This is where I have the formula that calculates the total profit. I want it maximized. The changing cells are these two cells, where I have decision variables, x1 and x2, and the constraints are two types. Let me start from the second one. The second one is the resource constraints. Actually, in one line, I have three constraints added. These three numbers, each of them should be respectively smaller or equal than to um, this the, the respective number from this uh, range, right? And then I also have the non-negativities. The non-negativities basically say that two decision variables must be greater than or equal to zero, right? So this is the model. The simplex method has to be selected as the solution method. Actually, instead of this, I could have just selected make unconstrained variables non-negative because all lower bounds are zero. So now if you solve this, if you click solve, what you will see is, first of all, that the solver gives you a message, solver found a solution, and all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Only if you see this message, you have the optimal solution, right? There could be a lot of errors, right? So what I will specify here now, in, in addition to saying keep the solution, and you see the optimal solution here, uh, I also will ask for answer and sensitivity report, especially the second one is the important one, right? When you do this, look here, the, the, there are only three sheets here, right? The default three sheets of Excel. But if I select those two and click OK, two additional uh, sheets are created. One is called answer report. And in the answer report, in addition to some data from the, the log from the solver, you have information about objective variables and constraints. This is quite simple information like original values that I started with and the final values and then what type of variable is it? It's continuous variables. But you have also something called binding, non-binding status and slack. Um, and then uh, the more important part is sensitivity report. And here you see something that we'll be using in the subsequent videos. You see information for variable cells, including reduced cost and allowable increase and decrease for objective coefficients. And then you also see the second part, which relates to constraints. Uh, right, and this will be in the later videos where we will talk about what the shadow prices are and what is the allowable increase and decrease for the right hand side of a constraint. Right, so this is how you can get it in Excel, and uh, I will also show you how to get the same information in Python uh, when you use Gurobi Solver. Uh, from Python interface. So again, there is a model here that I'm not going to explain in, in a lot of detail, just very briefly. So ad other than importing NumPy and Gurobi library to, to be able to define the data and solve the problem, here is the data. I defined actually names of variables and names of constraints just uh, so that the display later on looks nicer. This is not necessary. In general, the model would work without those names. And this is the data. This is the profit coefficients, as you remember, 350 and 300. Number of resources used um, by each product in each of the three constraints. This is pumps used. This is labor hours used. And this is feet of tubing used. And then the resources that are available, I write for the three resources that we have, pumps, labor, and tubes. And this is just the definition of the model just getting the number of variables and the number of constraints, creating the model, defining the variables x, n variables, right? And it should be two in this case, defining the objective, which is just a sum product, right, uh, of profits and variables, and defining the constraints. Actually, constraints can be defined much shorter, but because I wanted to use the names, I defined them in a loop and refer to each name um, separately, right? So if we run this, I press Control Enter, 
right? It, uh, the model runs, finds an optimal objective value of 66,100. You see this is E plus 4, so we should move the point for four, four digits, right? So this is 66,100. Dollars. You don't see the solution, but we can print it later on. And then in order to obtain sensitivity report, I have these lines, model print attribute. And then I select which attribute. So I have basically first uh, a few lines showing me, <coughs> first line showing me the objective value, which is just the same value as this, L, right? I can, you can access this through an attribute objective value. And then I print attributes in a tabular format, right? So first I print something that looks very similar to the first part in Excel that relates to variables. It prints the value of the variable, it prints the objective, and prints the range of optimality that uh, was slightly differently expressed by allowable increase and decrease in, in Excel. And then the second part prints additional things for variables like reduced costs, like uh, the lower bounds and upper bounds on the decision variables. You remember the lower bounds were both zero, the upper bounds were, were not defined, so they were actually infinities, and here the, the solver put a very large number, right? And then there is some information in that we will discuss later. And the third part is actually corresponding very similar to, to the uh, second part in the Excel sensitivity analysis. It shows for each constraint, here is the name, it shows what sign the constraint had. Uh, this actually means that the constraint was less than or equal uh, right, and what slack, and then the shadow prices are called here pi, and then we have right hand sides and information about a certain range for right hand sides. In Excel, it was defined as allowable increase and decrease, but here this is defined as upper, lower and upper limit of the range. So, this is how you can obtain sensitivity analysis um, from Gurobi uh, when you are accessing Gurobi Solver through Python interface. And I have a few more lines here. For example, if you just want a value of the variables, you can just access the parameters. Instead of printing it here, you can access the uh, attribute of uh, the model X, or like you're accessing objective value, or you can access the shadow prices model.py. If we run this code, you'll see it displays the, the array of values of variables. This displays the objective value and then the pi will display an array of shadow prices from, from the model, and then you can, of course, access just one value of the variable, like x, the first variable, um, the value is 122, or the first shadow price uh, constraint 0, shadow price is 200. There are other things you can print out of the model, uh, like statistics um, of coefficients, and, um, and you can also get help for uh, Gurobi uh, routines, right? So this is this, the main goal of this video was to show you how to obtain sensitivity reports, sensitivity analysis information from Gurobi and also from Excel. And you will see that the following videos we will be trying to understand how to use this information or this information obtained from Gurobi, Excel and Gurobi.